And good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Hector. Top of the morning. Uh, today we have a highly requested vlog, and mm -hmm. I don't even know why we haven't done this uh, so many times before. And I would open it by saying, if there's a question that you get asked all day long that everybody wants, not only in the office, but on the street, mm -hmm. what is the question? Whitening. How can I get my teeth whiter? Yeah. Everybody wants their teeth whiter. Everyone wants their teeth whiter. In fact, I'll see people and compliment them on their smile. What do they say? Oh, I wish it was whiter. I wish it was whiter. <laughs> So it's all relative, I understand that. It's almost like a sport. Mm. You know, it's like the guy in the gym who's huge. You say, dude, you're huge, my God. And what does he say? <laughs> uh, I'm kind of skinny right now. I need to get bigger, right? And it's fine because people who are trying to achieve something like whitening, they're on a mission mm. and people notice. And it says something when you see a white smile. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different ways. How does it work? Yeah, on the basic principle of what whitening is, you're tackling stains uh, that have penetrated through the tooth. So the outside layer of your tooth, the enamel, actually has these pores, and the stains are penetrating through those pores, causing the difference in color or difference in appearance. And the goal for whitening is to get rid of those stains through a specific solution of typically hydrogen peroxide. It's an oxidation reaction. It's actually chemically bonding to the stains within those pores, removing them, allowing your teeth to be whiter. Yeah, so kind of when you're talking about that, I'm thinking about at home in my kitchen with the subway tile, the white subway tile that we fell in love with a long time ago every time we would go to New York. And if we didn't clean that subway tile weekly, it's gonna look antiqued. It's gonna look tobacco stained or, you know, more ochre in color and why wouldn't you do this with your teeth get some subway tiles in your teeth and it's something that you need to clean them and it's not enough just to clean them with regular toothpaste um, so this is kind of a deep clean mm -hmm. and a lot of times i'll tell patients it's something that you may want to think about with every change of the season mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's maintenance it's maintenance it's daily it's it's daily upkeep maintenance of your pearly whites so what's entry level? Entry level. What can people do entry level? Yeah, entry level, something you can buy <clears throat> at a store would be the whitening strips. Very common whitening modality that a lot of patients know, a lot of people have tried, and it's relatively inexpensive. It's a good way to get started to see if whitening can be something that you'd like to do or see if it works for you. And, and the results that we see with whitening strips, I mean, sometimes people say that it really works for them and, and you can attest to that. Yeah, it's like the over the years, I'm constantly looking and asking patients about how they've achieved what I consider beautiful white teeth. And every now and then, and somebody will say it kind of like proud of it, like, I hacked the system. <laughs> I used whitening strips. It's not offensive to me at all because my goal is to have my patients walking around with the whitest teeth around town. So I'm like, all right, I'll take note. And I think what I've seen in these cases where whitening strips are effective is first of all, that patient is very motivated. Oh yeah. So they're very consistent. They're very careful about the application and they had mild stains to begin with, let's face it. Yeah, because the whitening strips is definitely entry level. Mm -hmm. uh, the percentage of the actual solution within there, which is um, one of the key things for whitening is the percentage. Uh, it's on the lower side. So on, in addition, there's strips that are this piece of plastic you're just kind of sticking to your teeth. Yeah. Uh, they're not as form fitting. So uh, it takes a good application, like you said, dedication to do this as well as you can at home. And you have to do it and say application for 30 minutes several times over the course of a couple of weeks to really see some good results. Um, and like you said, some people can if they're dedicated and motivated. Yeah, so that's an easy option. Okay, so let's go to the, the next level yeah. when patients are coming in as a new patient or a hygiene exam and you're seeing all kind of problems and they ask you about, can I get my teeth whiter? That's right, yeah. <laughs> what, can, what, can you, what can you, but they're on a pretty good budget, you know, where they can't 
really afford even the dentistry that they need to do right now, but they want to get motivated and get going on their dental health, uh, what would be an entry level for them? Yeah, another entry level, which is in the tier of, of doing things at home, is to do some sort of whitening with a custom tray. Sure, yeah. And that is something where you are guided by your dentist who will make you that tray. It's like a piece of plastic that will actually form fit to your teeth, that keyword custom. And it versus the strips, which is not custom, it's just that piece of plastic you're trying to stick to your teeth best you can, the tray will be um, applying the gel uniformly. So everything is, is a better application. Yeah, and that makes sense, right? I mean, you can picture if something's made custom like that and you can ensconce the teeth with a uniform layer of this solution, you're gonna get better mm -hmm. results. And again, it's definitely going to depend on your your technique, your That's application. Right. In, in, in this case, you're doing it all yourself. So we're having to guide the patient on the brand that we like and on the solution strength that we mm -hmm. think is right for them. And also the follow up and see how they're doing with this. And oftentimes, sometimes when we don't see great results and we'll ask the patient, are you, what's your protocol been? They go, oh yeah, I did it for a couple nights and then I just kind of forgot about it. Yeah, that's that's on you, right? Mm -hmm. And then we see patients like, whoa, maybe you never slow down a little bit because they're so white <laughs> that now it's getting whiter than some of the dentistry in there, mm -hmm. right? Which we'll get to. Um, and, but so it works, it works tremendously. And, and that is too relatively inexpensive. I mean, if I'm thinking about the cost of the take home, it's like maybe the cost of a filling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So what's the next level? The next level. So we're looking at coffee stains, tea stains, stubborn stains. And when you are trying to tackle those kinds of stains, we recommend something more in office, which means uh, treatment of a whitening. When you're sitting down in the dental chair, a dental professional is guiding you through it and you're using a higher or stronger percentage of that solution. Mm -hmm. And we call that boost. Yeah, so boost, boost is what we've been using for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And guys, this is more expensive because it's taking chair time. That's right. But the good thing is it's not required for the dentist chair time, so it's still very affordable. And like the cost of boost is maybe the cost of two fillings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. And it's the chair time with a dental professional, which has a huge benefit because you're being more guided through it. So many people worry about sensitivity. And so you, the dental professional is with you uh, through the procedure. It's about an hour is that office visit. And they're checking up and seeing how you're feeling, how you're doing. Um, and, and a key thing that we do when we're doing these procedures, uh, we're actually doing a desensitizing paste on the teeth to try to help. Yes, and, and I'll tell you in our office, uh, Hector is the guy who is helping patients achieve their whitening goals, and he's been doing this for a long time. He's got it down to the science, mm -hmm, and right. he's helping you choose what type of solution, even what type of whitening, and sometimes downselling you on something where you may not need as much as is very, very beneficial to patients because mm -hmm. we want you to get to your goal. Yeah. And, and Boost has been, we've been using Boost for 20 years or so. And it it has really been amazing what, what people can get with the Boost and really haven't heard problems with sensitivity in a while. Because remember, we're taking the time to isolate the teeth only in, in even sensitive parts of the teeth we can isolate. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly isolating the gum tissue and that does take some time and expertise. It's taken him a long time to get really good at that. I remember when we were training Hector, it's like I was looking over his shoulder all the time. Now I don't even look over, I don't look at his shoulder at all. In fact, I couldn't do it anymore. He he does it. And you know, sometimes when people are even using the strips, Hector Wright, they say, I don't know, my teeth weren't sensitive, my gums got sensitive. It's because you're not isolating the gums, even with the take home whitening, you're not isolating the gums, but in office whitening, yes, the gums are isolated because you're using a percentage that it's like 50%. Mm -hmm. So you, we think of it like kind of a catalyst for the whole thing too. It's like that opens the pores up and gets the nasty staining out of there 
and then you hit it at home. That's right. At your convenience, you hit it at home again with some custom trays. Which is part of the cost mm -hmm. of the boost. So you get a two for one. Mm -hmm. These are for people that are serious. They've got something coming up. They've got a vacation coming up. They have a big event coming up. A wedding. Wedding, you know, social event. Uh, boost is right for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about the next level? There's always another level. There's always another level. And you might know that you're in this level. It's typically for more staining that happened during the development of your teeth. It's very deep staining, you know, gray, yellow. And two common ways that happens, the most common we hear is uh, tetracycline staining. Yeah, that's a bad word. <laughs> a bad word in dentistry. Right. And it's the antibiotic that you might have gotten when you were young, um, typically from age eight or below. And it causes a deep stain through the enamel into yeah. even the dentin of the tooth. Kind of a, like banded streaks and sometimes even seen purple teeth from it. Yeah, it's very deep and, and you will know if you're in that category mm -hmm. of, of a deeper type of staining and you might need this stronger type of, of whitening solution or yeah. whitening procedure. And, and that's called core. Mm -hmm. And we are always asking our colleagues around the world about what is the most effective and that's how we found core. In speaking with different professionals around the world and thinking that there wasn't a solution for a lot of these people, uh, we have found CORE to be effective for these people that you're talking about that have tried regular whitening, even in office whitening, and have not been effective. And CORE has been the solution mm -hmm. for them. So, how is CORE different than the Boost? So, CORE is the combination of doing in office visits. And versus the boost, which is one visit with a very strong solution, the core, it's a range of solutions, but it's three visits, three separate visits that you're gonna come in and sit in the chair. And we like to say, it's kind of like a spa day when you're coming into these visits. Again, the dental professional is taking care of isolating your gums, isolating your cheeks, make sure everything's comfortable. You're comfortable in the chair. Sometimes you get the massage feature going for you. You can be on your phone mm -hmm. and it's a, still an hour visit about three of those visits. Yes, and I think it's also the protocol that they develop with the core whitening where they have protocol specific to the type of staining that there is and to the level of the staining there is. And of course there's tiers of that, which is more the cost in this case of maybe a one or two veneers. But if somebody has the situation it's well worth the cost of one, two veneers to avoid the other solution, which would be 10, 20 veneers in order to get their teeth to an appropriate level. Again, if their goal is, doc, I want to solve this problem, we're gonna work hard to figure out how to solve that problem for you in the most conservative, least invasive way. And, and CORE can be their solution. Again, it depends on how motivated you are to follow this protocol. So it's like anything else. If your trainer gives you a protocol and you're not following it, you're not going to get nearly the result as somebody else who is using the same protocol and you're looking at them like, how did you get these results? It's they put their elbow grease into it. Mm -hmm. And listen, guy, core, core is there for you to be able to take advantage of. And again, Hector's the expert on core. Yeah. He's got the protocol down to his He science. has the protocol down and, and is very good and consistent with giving patients what that protocol is and you getting to making sure that he follows up with you that you're following that protocol. And a couple of other things that's different, I don't know if we mentioned this, but the core is different from the beginning because it comes shipped refrigerated, mm -hmm. which tells you something. It's like they're paying attention to the details and this proprietary solution that they use needs to stay refrigerated in order to be maximum effectiveness. And then we, as soon as we get it, take it out of the box and refrigerate it. And it stays refrigerated. And the other tough thing about it, it has a shelf life of only so long. So an office that isn't doing a lot of core, it's like buying seafood at a place that's not selling a lot of seafood, right? <laughs> you might want to do it because it's not going to be fresh. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of core, so we can keep the core and keep it fresh because if you buy the core product and it goes bad because you're not using it, you got to throw it out. 
So that's important to think about also, mm -hmm. is you want somebody who's using Core to be using it on a regular, regular basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can think of a couple of cases where we've done, you know, somebody's come in just really embarrassed of their smile with, with really unsightly tetracycline staining teeth. And we've looked at it and drawn up a treatment plan for Invisalign, mm -hmm. core whitening, and anticipation of preparing the teeth for veneers, because if you're gonna do veneers, you also need to whiten the teeth underneath it. And at the end of the core, I don't know, do you really need the veneers now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the results. And that is when I was sold on core. And again, I was happy for the patient that they didn't need the veneers. I mean, veneers are a great solution if you can't get there with core, but if you can get there with core, more power to you. Mm -hmm. And in these individuals, they follow the protocol to the T and they've saved themselves thousands of dollars and, and it's continued to hold up with the core. So I think the, that is really useful information for patients to get up to speed on whitening in general, and for us, that's state of the art right now. I mean, those are the options that you have to get the whitest teeth around. Now, what are some of the other little nuances of the whitening that you need to talk about? Well, one nuance we like to talk about is when you're doing whitening at the end, uh, you want to wait some time before doing any type of restorative dentistry Good with point. the front teeth, and that's because it takes about three weeks for that final shade to settle. To settle in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't want to, let's say, do whitening the day before you're gonna get uh, a veneer or a filling in your front tooth, because that shade will not be that final shade. Yeah, please don't do that, um, because until we found this out, somebody would sneak some whitening in for the week before we were about to do matching some dentistry with some veneers, and because in their head, they're thinking, okay, I want him to make these veneers as wide as he possibly can. And then they come in with their teeth disguised as a different color. And then when it settles in and you seat the veneers, now the teeth three weeks later are a whole different color. And now we look at it like, gee, I thought I got that shade right, but why are my veneers sticking out from their natural teeth? And it is because they've snuck some whitening in mm -hmm. the night before, or a couple of nights before the procedure. Uh, what else? When you're doing whitening, it will affect your natural teeth. But if you have some dentistry, yes, uh, fillings, veneers, crowns, something covering your teeth, that won't whiten with whitening treatment. Right. So the point here is consult again with your dentist, develop a strategy for that. And the strategy that we see now is oftentimes is replacing a couple of crowns. Don't let the crowns hold you back from getting whiter teeth. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to change these crowns out. And oftentimes these crowns, you ask the patient, how long has that crown been there? Years. It's been 20 something years. They're like, I can't whiten because I have this crown back here that's like a whole different zip code. <laughs> Problem solved. Let's take that crown out, renew it, and get it up to speed and whiten your teeth as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Now you got a whole different smile. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, you know, those are some good points and some other things that, you know, that are little nuances with the whitening that people ask me still, mm -hmm. and this should be common knowledge, is, Doc, I want to whiten, but I'm concerned that the whitening is going to harm my teeth. I can tell you, after whitening for 30 something years, I've never seen permanent sensitivity from whitening. I've never seen somebody need a root canal from whitening. And I haven't seen the enamel get weaker from whitening or cause somebody's enamel to have cavities because of whitening. So that is something that you need to know. I mean, this whitening has been out there for a while. It's been vetted out and it's not going to be something that is going, it's going to harm your teeth. In, in any way, and any dental professional is not going to lead you in the direction of where it's not going, it's gonna take away from your dental health. Uh, so this is only going to package your dental health to where it's very presentable in something that you can enjoy your smile a lot more. Um, anything else that you wanted to cover? 
with this. We can talk about things you should do during your whitening to right. make it a better experience and uh, help with maybe sensitivity. Uh, make sure you're using some sort of fluoride, mm -hmm. toothpaste that's going to help with sensitivity. Avoid acidic foods or acidic drinks because that's going to heighten sensitivity. And consult your doctor or your dentist in terms of if you're having some sensitivity because again, we're guiding you and we're trying to offer you the whitening that's best fit for you. Okay, so what about your red wine drinker? Yeah, you when want, they're whitening. <laughs> want to avoid those kinds of uh, staining type of uh, drinks. Mustard, coffee, yeah. teas, drink through a straw. Yes, white wine's okay. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the whitening is if you're ready for it and you're dedicated to uh, get it done and, and follow the steps. Um, motivation and consistency is really the key to success. Right. So oftentimes with something like the Boost, we're thinking at least one shade wider immediately, mm -hmm. oftentimes three. Yeah, same with, day results. For the with boost. something like the course, guys, the limit, you can go from mm -hmm. one end of the spectrum to the other, which we're talking six, seven shades. Right. And it takes more time, but when you have that deep staining to begin with the results to get to a very natural white looking smile it's worth it yeah. it's amazing and the take home whitening one to two shades and then the crest white strips realistically one one shade so that kind of wraps up everything you know need to know about whitening mm -hmm. thank you